Right, so we're just at the stage now where I'm going to start installing the diesel heater, um, fuel pickup and electrics. Um, I'm also going to install in the B2B over to the electrics over there and um, the um, aux beam control panel that's there. I'm going to be perfectly honest now, like I said, it's saying in another video, um, thanks to aux beam for sending me this for free. Uh, they didn't ask to make a video or do anything like that. They just said, have it on your camper van and then um, if you like it, make a video out of it. So I just thought that I would just tell you what it's like installing it um, and using it as a bit of a, a thing for it. And if you choose to go and buy it yourself, then it's up to you. So as I'm working in this area now, um, I really only want to connect and disconnect the battery once rather than messing around. So just thinking out loud on the location for this, thinking put it there. Because then I can run the cables through here, under there to there, because it's got to have a starter battery or a vehicle battery cable to it. Um, and then from there, uh, you wire all your ancillaries. So I'm going to have spot lamps, fog lamps, roof lights, and then obviously whatever else I want to put on there as well. Um, so by mounting it in here, it does give me an opportunity as well to route cables into there for the spot lamps and everything else. And um, the roof lights that I've got up there, those things, the cables up there. So I can bring that down this pillar um, and bring it straight out under there and in through there. So I kind of hide it that way as well. So I think that's where the ox beam's um, going to sit. Plus it's easier then, you know, if a fuse blows or I want to wire more things, all I've got to do is take this off, wire it in there and it's done that way. Um, I'm not going to be prissy about having a cover on the side of here or anything. So um, that's going to be a perfect location for it to sit. So those are the front end lights I've got. Obviously um, spot lamps and then more fog lamps, which are like the ones up on the top there. Um, so they're all going to go on their own little switch. Um, so that if I just flash people normally during the daytime, it's just my normal lights. And only if I really need uh, the high intensity kind of like lighting, um, I can then switch them on. Um, from the aux beam controller and this is the aux beam controller the little switches and um, you get all sorts of little um, stickers yeah so in this pack here you get little stickers so you can put whatever you want on there you can change the color and it illuminates as well so pretty cool once it's finished and um, they even give you spare fuses all the cables and the breaker and all the screws and mounting brackets and everything all in this Bluetooth kit. So it is really cool. This is the instructions that you get with it, which is pretty cool. Very clear and concise. Explain what each part they give you and what it's for. And obviously a thing I probably have not said right now is this control panel is actually Bluetooth as well. So you can get an app for Android or iPhone and control it via Bluetooth. Um, and these are the stickers that you get for each of the buttons as well. So there's plenty of options there. Um, so yeah, obviously um, let's get wiring. So there we go. That's my new cables there in the conduit coming up to there. Uh, those are for three sets of lights on the front. Um, the biggest light is seven amp rated. Uh, those are the two spot lamps. So two spot lamps are drawing just over 100 watts. That's hardly any power at all. Perfect. And then I'm also having some DRL lights there as well to control for that. And this is the DC cable for the DC charger for EcoFlow. So I've pulled that in under the floor and I've just put some extra conduit around that to protect it as it sits on the floor. And then I'll connect that up shortly. Um, and then the rest of the cable for now, um, it just goes under the floor, like I say, and then it's going to pop out the back because it's going to be a seating area. And then obviously the toilet down the back and then goes over there. So this is the cable that's going to feed into the EcoFlow. And at this end, I'm just putting um, a fuse in, a 100 amp uh, mega fuse uh, from the battery terminals there. And this is just to protect the fact that, I mean, hopefully this is you know shielded, then in conduit and then in shielded conduit after that so um if it does come into contact with the chassis at any stage um then it'll blow this fuse the cable's rated at 160 amps so this fuse is 100 amps i'm only ever going to draw um up to 90 but possibly just 60 from this so the fuse will never blow unless the cable shorts out 
Um, obviously, if there's a fault at the other end, that's got its own protection. I'm just protecting the battery from shorting out against the chassis. That's what this fuse is for. You know, you start one job and then you think, while I'm doing this, I might as well just do that. And then before I know it, you're replacing the pollen filter in the cab filter because, yeah, the pollen filter is located somewhere where you're already going for something else. So why not choose to do that as well? So, yeah, everything's out of the fun right now. Um, I need an ignition feed for the aux beam controller. Um, so obviously that's up behind the dash. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to have to take some of this out anyway. So I might as well replace the pollen filter, which the new one's there. And then because it's only got one SIG lighter socket, I might as well add another one. And that's when I discovered the wiring's actually there for it. They're just lazy and haven't actually put the second one in. So happy days. That makes that job far easier. And also I can go there for my ignition feed as well. And because these are only active when the engine's running. So there is the little, um, it's got USB-C and normal USB as well. Now if I turn the ignition on, it shows the voltage. Um, and if you plug things in there, it also shows um, the power as well. And you can turn that off as well. There's a little button there if the, the light bothers you. So that's pretty cool. One job done. <sighs> it's getting quite late now. But I'm determined to finish this wiring job off. So, um, yeah, I am just trying to figure out where to place um, the aux beam um, control panel. Um, I've wired everything in the lights at the front. Obviously, you don't need to see that. They're all wired in. I'll show you them from outside in a minute. Um, but I've been trying to work around where can I put the aux beam controller where it's convenient to use, but at the same time, you know, aesthetically pleasing right underneath the right hand side where my keys are um, and there's also some controls here for fog lamps and the uh, onboard trip computer um, there's a little cubby hole that's really not used that much so I think I'm gonna leave it there I think that works for me actually um, it lights up so I've got the ignition on at the moment turn the ignition off Obviously that goes dead. Um, I've put on there some stickers. So I've got DRL, fog lamp, flood lamp, which is spot lamp, and then my roof lights. So like I said, if we put them on again and you click them on, they actually come on. Not bad for DRLs. Let's go for front fogs. Oh yeah. Let's go for spot lamps. No, I'll tease you. Let's go for roof lights. Oh yeah, they're good. So they do light up side of the ditch kind of thing as you're driving down the side of the road. That's good. Go on, let's have it. Ready? Spotlights. <laughs> um, obviously it's just lighting up a bush right now because that's what's in front of the unit. Um, but um, yeah, I'd imagine down the road I shall get plenty of distance out of them. So that's pretty cool for me. And if we shove them all on, that's what it looks like. How cool is that? It is a bit foggy right now, which is absolutely playing to this. Look at those lights. They're epic. Seriously, though, we can control them from the app. Front fogs. Spot lamps. And top lamps. I think this is cool. So now we've got remote access to turn the lights on outside too. So that's the awning lights as well as the other lights as well. Um, and then round the back we've got the uh, lights there and you can see my little dildo strapped in place like all dildos should be. Sexy. Oh yeah, like an alien. There is one thing though, you all might want to know this. How much power does my EcoFlow deliver from a B2B charge? So there we go, that's just engine idle at the moment. 
60 amps of power and the app now shows that um, the alternator is providing there and you're getting all the lights showing all the details and you can have um, multiple charges as well so if I wanted to um, I could plug in one of the mains right now and if it was a sunny day and the alternator's running um, I can have up to three kilowatts of charge coming in. I reckon that's pretty cool and I'm going to have lots of lights wherever I go to daft places. <laughs> so um, yeah, thanks for watching and if you like my lights or my little dash um, USB-C holder um, or any of the Oxbeam stuff I'll put links down below where you can get hold of it.